1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, good afternoon everyone. I'm 10 Tampa Bay Chief Meteorologist Bobby Deskins. Tropical update early on our Thursday afternoon. We've got two systems that we're watching. There's actually another wave in the far northeast Atlantic we're not even worried about. But of course we have Hurricane Lee, now a Category 2 hurricane that we're watching. Tropical Depression 14, as of 11 o'clock this morning, what was Invest 96L is now Tropical Depression 14, and that one is forecast to strengthen to a hurricane as well. So let's start here with Lee. There are the Windward Islands. Lee is far away from there. It's actually over 2,000 miles from Miami right now. But you can see Lee is really starting to shape up out there. And in fact, pressures are dropping. Pressure now down at 983. From about 2 or th 3, 4, 5 this morning, to about two or three, four, five tomorrow morning. That 24 hour period, I expect this pressure to drop over 24 millibars, which means it's bombing out, which means it's rapidly intensifying. Uh, and you can see the, look at the eye, just looking at the eye wall right there, this thing is really shaping up. The outflow, look at the clouds on the outside, almost all the way around, they're all expanding. That indicates that there's no wind shear on this as, as well. And underneath of this, we know we have very warm water. We need 80 plus degree water. We have mid 80s. In fact, we have very warm water that's running about three degrees above average. Latest forecast as of 11 o'clock from the National Hurricane Center this morning calls for a 160 mile per hour category five hurricane by Friday night into Saturday. Now, this cone is for the center of the storm, right? It's not the weather. But I think most of the weather will still stay north of the islands, including Puerto Rico. Get some breezes there, generally out of the west and northwest. But man, oh man, can you see that strengthening coming? The forecast models are pretty much all showing a curve. It's a couple outliers, but not very many. Bermuda is right there where the M is in Bermuda. And so they're really going to have to watch it. And so will the folks up in the northeast. I mean, Maine and especially Halifax. Up in Nova Scotia, they're going to have to watch that as well. So let's talk a little bit more about it. This is the GFS, the ensembles. It's the GFS model run about 30 times and kind of tweak things here or there. And they're all pretty much seeing the turn as well too, right? Now it will slow down as it makes this turn and then it will move off to the north. Now some are right at Bermuda, some are kind of halfway in between Bermuda and North Carolina. The European model usually does pretty good and you can see the turn here, but look at the spread that they have. Right, the Hurricane Center thinks it will be right about here, and then does it come further? Does it start to turn? That's a pretty good spread in the model, so that's why we say, look, we don't know exactly where this is going to go. And anytime you get a system that slows down and then turns, you have to wait. You really have to wait until that slowdown begins, because small things can happen in the in the tracking there, and then that can change the eventual forecast of it. And the European model is kind of showing you that, right? It's showing the uncertainty once you get that turn to the north or when you get it. Now, here's the other side of this. There's no shear. This is not really wind shear that's hurting it. This is wind shear. That's wind shear. But watch what happens as we go through uh, Monday and Tuesday of next week. Look at all this wind shear coming across Florida. This is good news if you live in Florida because this would really help shear anything apart that's coming at us. Now, Watch as we go into Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Now, the Hurricane Center has it out to here. Now, the forecast is up to here. You see it coming further to the north. It's got all this shear on it. So, that's why if you saw the forecast, they actually have it weakening a little bit. Saturday, it'll peak. Saturday night, Sunday, Monday, it starts to weaken. Still 140, 145 mile per hour winds. But it's weakening in here because of that wind shear. West and southwest, so it's going to blow a lot of it 
off to the north and the east. It won't be that perfect circle that it's almost getting to right now. It will start to fill in just a little bit there. But between, say, where it is now and right about here, there's not much to slow this thing down. Now, that's not the only one. Let's go over here towards the Cape Verde Islands. Let's talk about Tropical Depression 14. Pretty impressive right now. Winds at 35 miles per hour. It's not the best structure, but you see around the whole outside, good outflow. The atmosphere does this. And this is what happened when we had Edalia as well, too. It pops storms all across the basin at the same time. It's doing almost the exact same thing that Lee is having to do right now with this one, which is 14. So winds at 35 miles per hour, but it's forecast very quickly tonight to go down to or go up to about 40 to 45. That'll give it the name Margot, Tropical Storm Margot, and it's forecast to be a hurricane by early Sunday morning. Cat 2, possible, and they got it at 90 right now uh, Tuesday morning. So that's getting close to Cat 2 territory, but it's way out here. I mean, there's Bermuda, there's the United States. That's why we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on that because that will stay out at sea. Now, forecast models in pretty good agreement with that as well with the recurve. That's what we want to see. <laughs> That's worth showing you. All right, now, the names. So if we get Margot, which it looks like we will, number one, that would be one, two, three, four, five hurricanes so far if Margot becomes a hurricane, which is forecast to do so far. Franklin, Idalia, and Lee will all be major hurricanes or more. In fact, all of those would be Cat 4 or higher. That's three, and then Margo would be close to Cat 2. Margo right now, I think, and it's going so far to the north, it looks like it would stay uh, below those limits of a major hurricane, but we'll have to watch. Cat 3, 111 or higher, is where you get into the major hurricane status. All right, now, now I want to talk a little bit about the hurricane cone. Here's the track on Hurricane Lee. I heard some stuff yesterday online, people saying, well, this cone's getting bigger because of the uncertainty in the turn. And that's not true. This, this is actually a calculated circle here. So let me explain how they do that. The National Hurricane Center forecasts where they think the center of the storm will be. They go out, well, 12 hours, 24, 36, 48, uh, and they keep going out. Once they get to three days, they just go three days, four days, five days. The only thing that they are forecasting is that point, that point, that point, and that point, and that point. They're not forecasting any of these lines. They just say, hey, look, we think, and we're going to use day three, 72 hours. We think the center of the hurricane will be right there, and this is not for Lee. The, Lee is actually going to be further to the north and east of this track, but that's where they think it is. So let's use that, right? Then, once they get that forecast point, they add these circles to it. Now, these circles are calculated circles. Again, let's take day three. So they think the center is going to be there. They go back over the last five years and they say, how far off were we for all of our forecasts on day three? Every storm that they forecast, they did all these forecasts for. They said, you know, on average, we were however many miles off they were. They take two thirds of that number and they come up with this radius, 103 miles. That's from this point to there. So now, they said they think it's going to be here, but they know over the last five years they've been wrong, but not by much. So they could be 103 miles this way or 103 miles this way. So they draw a circle that big. Now, the Hurricane Center actually gets better and better, usually, at forecasting where it's going to be. Intensity forecasts are a little bit harder. But now when they go back and they look for the last five years, 2018 to 2022, they find out they did a little bit better. So now that radius is 99. It's not 103. So that radius shrinks. That circle shrinks. Now when you overlay that on top of where it would be, instead of using the old circle, this year we use the inner circle. That makes the cone just a little bit thinner there. right? That's how all of these, pot, these spots are made. It has nothing to do with the, with the turn or, or really the uncertainty in the forecast. Now, the problem is, and let me show you this, the timing. So day three, day four, day five. What if day five was down here, right? That's what you're seeing with Hurricane Lee. Because remember, it's going pretty quickly here, but it's going to slow down and then turn and go to the north. So day four is now closer to day five. And as a result, instead of having a cone like that, the cone comes down 
and you get this bulge on the back side. It's not about the uncertainty of the, of the turn. It's about where they think the center will be and that error that they use going back over the last five years. And so that's what that bulge is right there. Now, eventually, as this makes the turn, it's going to speed up and you're going to see it look narrow because the distance from one point to the next is going to be longer. And they just connect the circles, just like connecting the dots. So I hope that helps. I know that's a, a lot to explain and to soak in, but that's why when we show this cone on TV, we're literally showing you a statistical model and it has nothing to do with the weather. It has everything to do with where they think the center may be. You're going to get weather inside. Look, there's weather outside of this cone right here, right? Weather to the south as well, too. Maybe not here, but this is just about purely where the location of the center of the storm will be. So don't ever look at a cone and say, hey, we're out of the cone. We're okay. If that cone's close to you, you could have weather right in your backyard.